with Valeria, his wife. He is a world champion footbag star. World champion, Hall of Famer, actually, right? Scott Davidson. What you see right now is um, the basic kicks. Now remember this, we're seeing today a whole bunch of games played from around the world. Well, this one's homegrown right here in the United States. It's very similar to other games played around the world. But this one was developed by two friends of ours, um, John Stahlberger and Mike Marshall, back in 1972. So relatively speaking, in the world of sports and games, it's, uh, it's pretty young. It's still an infant as far as games are concerned. Um, we, we do it the way you see it, the way it started, was really to rehabilitate from uh, knee surgery. These two guys were seven professional football players, and they had, had knee surgery, and they thought, well, how can we get back in shape? So they took a sock, filled it with beans, and sewed it up, and they called it hacking the sock. And when they did that, they would go outside in their backyard around the neighborhood and hack the sock. Let's go out and hack the sock. And from that came hack the sack. And hacky sack was born. And these guys got pretty uh, wise and thought, well, we could turn this into a game. It's kind of fun, you know, doing these kicks. How many kicks can we do? So they started keeping track of what, how many in a row they could do. And they thought, well, this is a fun game. Rambo came along and said, hey, that's kind of fun. Can you guys uh, sell us the idea? So from there came a happy sack. And John Stahlberg is now known to this, to this day as Mr. Happy Sack. He lives out in um, near Seattle, Washington. He's in Washington, on the, on the West Coast. And we get together every now and then, we still keep in touch. And from this, Wamble decided, well, we could do games with this. So counting how many in a row you could do. So can anybody guess what, what you think is the most kicks someone can do in a row? Go ahead, tell me. Just throw a number out. A thousand kicks. Scott probably already did a thousand kicks just standing up here. What do you think the world record is? Anyone? It's got to be more than a thousand. Well, okay, it's a little less than a million. It's actually um, 63,326 kicks. And believe it or not, that world record is one of the most talked about world records in the Guinness Book of World Records. And it's a friend of ours in Des Plaines, Illinois, Ted Martin. He was going to be here today to show a little bit. I don't know, he might have gotten lost. But that record was set a few. Maybe uh, five or six years ago, it was still stand. So, if anybody, how long ago? Closer to, oh my god. Okay, so it's closer to 15 years ago, and that record still stands. 63,326 kicks. That's without stopping. And it took him over eight hours to do. No stopping, no bathroom breaks, no nothing. If it dropped, that was it, that was the end of the record. And believe it or not, what was more grueling than, than actually doing the kicking was doing the counting. I know, I was there for eight hours, and we had to do it in shifts with a clicker. So my thumb got really sore that day. But we did, we verified it, the Guinness Book of World Record people were there, and it still stands. And if you ever want to know, you can tell them he's right here in Chicago, just playing Illinois, Ted Martin. And um, so... Going from there, people thought, okay, well, that's all you can do is just kick it consecutively. Well, there's got to be more than that. So more did games develop. People started standing around in a circle, and you'd see them doing it cooperatively, keeping it off the ground. So hacking in a circle, hacking the circle, playing games like that were very much, no, there wasn't a winner, there wasn't a loser. Everyone stands in a circle, and the object of the game really is to just keep the bag off the ground. So everyone gets a turn, and the more people get to touch it, the better it is. So everyone walks, it's a win-win. Everyone works cooperatively. Wouldn't it be nice if the whole world did that? Oh, I can do it, sure. Like that. Well, that wasn't the only thing. Things like that happen by accident all the time in circles. And so people said, hey, you can do tricks with these. Wouldn't it be fun if we developed some tricks? So now not just the insides, but outsides were developed. You can kick it 
while you're jumping, doing sliding kicks. And all the surfaces now became available. Not only the inside of the shoe, maybe the outside of the shoe could be used. Or how about the toes? Can you use toes? So what we're, at, what we're showing you right now are some of the basic kicks that are used. And that, believe it or not, this took a long time to develop. It wasn't until mid-80s that people said, hey, let's see if we can do these tricks to music and see who comes up with the better tricks and, and, and see if we can judge them. So as this game developed, it actually got set to music, choreographed, and then judged. So we do actually have competitions in what we call foot bag freestyle. And this is only one part of what we do in foot bag, because now it's also, it's, it's no longer a hacky sack. Hacky sacks are brands, but foot bag is the actual sport or the game. And so they said, well, what else can you do? And these tricks started developing faster than you could name them. And actually, all of these tricks, just like in maybe in skateboarding, everybody knows that those tricks also have names. In foot bag, they do too. So what you see my husband doing right now are called clippers. They're going from one side to the other side of his body. And he's using both sides of his body equally. And these tricks were really hard to develop at the beginning because nobody really could talk about it. And now with the video, everyone knows these tricks quickly and kids are learning all of this stuff really fast. Back in the day, though, this took months and months and months to learn. Okay, so now there was ways to actually figure out which tricks were harder. And that was because the more surfaces you touched while the bag was mobile or the bag was in the air, and the more points you would get. So just going around the bag with your leg, that was called a dexterity. So you could do around the world. Both ways. You could go around it inside and around it outside. So this had to become really tricky because now you had to really watch to see which direction the feet were moving. And now also, from that came things, not just the dexterity. You see how the tricks got harder and harder? Yeah, so the judges were having to start to videotape this to, to know if they did it on the left side or on the right side of the body. And all surfaces count, so you can catch it on different parts of your body, too. You can catch it on the top of your head. You can catch it on the back of your neck. You can do any other surfaces that you can think of. So my husband's really good at doing the soul delay. So the bottom of the foot counts for points, too. And each one of these would add up until you have a score at the end. And, of course, if you drop it, uh-oh, that counts against you. It's like falling down in figure skating. You don't want to ever fall down, so you never want to drop a bag. Some of the other games that we play with a foot bag. We also play this over a five-foot net, very much like volleyball. The only difference is you never touch the ball with your hands. The entire time you're playing, you're playing with your feet. Imagine kicking over five feet. That's about... I'm five six, so maybe about here. So you have to imagine that you're kicking a bag over the net using only your feet from the knees down. Anywhere in here is, is, is allowed. So there's butts, spikes, bumps, and sets all done with just your feet. And these guys get pretty well inverted. Now, around the world there are games that are played that are very similar. In Malaysia, they play a game with a tap rock ball. It's a little bit bigger. It's about five or six inches in diameter, usually made out of a straw material, kind of a hollow, a hollow ball. And they play this with three people on the side, but they do allow other parts of the body to be touched while they're playing it, but mostly it's used with their feet. It's a national sport in, in Malaysia. Other places, other places in the world also play foot sports that are very similar. 